Back on Wyoming Sports Line, it's our pleasure now to go to the phones and welcome in Tony D from the Bulldog Hour on AM 940 Fresno, which is the ESPN radio affiliate in Fresno. Tony, do we use your last name or do we just call you Tony D? Well, Tony D works out fine. My last name is Diodato, so it's a lot easier for everybody, including me sometimes, <laughs> just to use Tony D. Absolutely, I like it. Uh, Tony, it's about 20 degrees and snowing in Laramie right now. I'm guessing things are a little bit different in Fresno. Yeah, it's uh, close to 70 degrees and sunny. We had some rain earlier in the week. We hope to have more at the end of the week, as I'm sure you guys are aware. We desperately need the moisture, but uh, it has not really even been winter yet this year. So uh, that's good news now and bad news in just a couple of months. Tony, as we look ahead to this Wyoming-Fresno State game coming up here in a little bit tonight, one of the most wild games, I think, in the Mountain West Conference so far this season. Last time these two teams met, went to triple overtime in Fresno. Uh, somehow Wyoming sneaks out of there with a win. Do we expect it to be that close again? Should we look forward to more overtimes this time? The Bulldogs certainly hope that they have the same opportunity, Jared, they did here we had mentioned that game, of course, which was played in uh, mid-January. Probably at the time would have been tougher for Wyoming to take as a loss because, as you know, the Cowboys had chances at the end of regulation and great chances in both the first two overtimes. And when Nance hit that elbow jumper in the third OT and then Hankerson hit the, the shot that wrapped it up, I think Wyoming was more relieved than Fresno State. I think the Bulldogs felt like, you know what, they played a really good team tough and they felt pretty good even with the loss. Now Fresno State is in much more of a desperate mode. They haven't gotten a lot done, nothing done on the road since that game, and their only home wins, San Jose State, Nevada, and then the one against Boise State. So that's really only the Bulldogs' uh, opportunity right now uh, beyond the seeding situation to get themselves psychologically ready. They've got to pick up one on the road, Jared, somewhere against quality opposition. So... They're in the hunt tonight late. Bulldogs are going to be very pleased. Yeah, Fresno State kind of in a battle right now with UNLV in New Mexico for at least sixth place in the conference. How big do you think it is for them to get into a top six seed headed into the tournament in Vegas so you don't have to play that first day? I think it's really important. You know, last year this team ended up in that play-in round and they almost lost to Air Force. Fresno State fell back 15 in the middle of the second half, came back to win, but... I think it took a lot of their legs away, and they couldn't handle New Mexico the next night. This time, the only way Fresno State, first of all, is going to make a postseason tourney will be to win the Mountain West Tournament. They're not going to go to a lesser tournament this year the way they went to the CBI last year. They're not going to qualify for the NIT where they're sitting right now. So if they're looking solely at the season ending at the Thomas and Mac, unless they can cut down the nets, I don't think, Jared, there's any way they can win four straight. So it's imperative that they've got to get in the top six, and they could very well end up facing Wyoming again when the tournament starts if the Cowboys end up the three seed. So this game has a lot on the line for the Bulldogs in just believing they can get it done against a good club. Where is the Fresno State fan base with this team? You've had some really good quality conference wins and signs that uh, this team belongs at the top of the Mountain West Conference, but you have dropped three out of your last four. Are the fans still optimistic about this team and what they can do late in the season? I think the fan base as a whole, first of all, there have been some good crowds. There also, in all honesty, have been a lot of great giveaways, iPads, those types of things. That's why... There were 8,100 there when the Cowboys came to town in January. The loss at Logan over the weekend, I think, signaled to a lot of the fan base that this is going to be a real tough end of the season unless Fresno State puts it together. We've talked on the air over and over again about cohesion or lack thereof. The constant changing this year where you had guys suspended, some guys have left the program, you had Guerrero come back now. They're some really good individual talent on this team, but so far we haven't seen a consistent 40 minutes with everybody on the same page, and I think the fan base is a little apprehensive because, in all honesty, we're running out of time now. There's only four games left in the regular season. What's kind of the buzz like about Wyoming out that direction? Is there much talk about uh, this team, and in particular the return of Larry Nance Jr. tonight? Well, there's no doubt that topic number one in all forms of media here about whether 
the Bulldogs are going to be able to handle Nance. The assumption is he's coming back tonight, and of course you would know well. Are you guys pretty much sure he's going to be playing tonight? He's listed as probable, so we're assuming so, yeah. Yeah, and so the Bulldogs are worried about Nance. They've had trouble with him, obviously. I mean, he suffered that terrible injury against Fresno State last year in Laramie. But also, Adams and Gravo are a real problem. Adams is so aggressive and I know that the Fresno State coaching staff has told the team, you've got to work on your man-to-man defense. You've got to keep Adams away from the bucket because he is such a tough matchup, and they've got to stop Grable from shooting open threes. You know, he had one open three that could have won that game earlier in the triple overtime matchup. So the guards are just as much a worry. But naturally, Larry Nance Jr. is always job number one, and I know the Bulldogs figure they're going to see him tonight. Rodney Terry, the Fresno State coach, said, as a senior, we know that Nance is going to be out there. Is there a guy for the Fresno State squad that has to be successful in order for the team to be successful? Is there kind of that go-to guy, or is it more of a group effort where at least two or three of your players have to be on for Fresno State to win? I'll tell you what, Jared, it's something that we have been trying to figure out all year long. (laughs) Marvell Harris is the best player on the team right now without question. When we look at the X factors on this team, we look at guys like Paul Watson, who had a good game against Wyoming, Julian Lewis, who when he plays under control can be very effective, and then a guy like Alex Davis, who when he keeps his emotions in check, and of course Alex was away from the team for a while because he couldn't handle things emotionally, he's another guy. So those three guys become your X factor even if you get out of Guerrero what you hope you're going to get out of him. If you get good games from Harrison Guerrero, one of those other three has to step up or Fresno State just can't get enough out there offensively to win games. And then last question I have for you, Tony. You've covered the Mountain West. You've covered this Fresno State team. Who is the best team in the conference that you've seen so far? I think overall I'd still say San Diego State, but I'll tell you what, I know that Poli is finally back with the team. How much a factor he's going to be, I don't know. I also know that both Wyoming and San Diego State are going to play a role in whether Fresno State ends up in that top six because, as you're aware, Jared, both are going to the Thomas and Mack to play UNLV, who finishes with San Jose State. So if the Bulldogs lose tonight, they have got to get it done at home against New Mexico and Air Force and hope that somebody bumps off UNLV So the Bulldogs are looking closely at the productivity of teams like San Diego State and Wyoming beyond this game tonight. But I'd have to say, from sheer defense alone, San Diego State is probably still the best team in this conference. And we've talked here that after having five bids not that long ago, this could be a one- or two-bid conference if we're not careful this year. And I think the Aztecs are definitely in. I think they're the best team. But if they cut down the nets in Las Vegas... Unless it's Colorado State against them, I don't know that anybody else is going to get in the NC2A this year from the Mountain West. Yeah, unfortunately, have to agree with you there. Uh, Tony, is there any kind of plugs, anything we need to know? I can't say as though we have a lot of folks that visit Fresno very often, probably in our listening audience, but uh, where can they get more info on the Bulldogs if they're a Mountain West Conference fan? The best place to go is to head to GoBulldogs.com, and you'll find a lot of information there about Fresno State. And I'll tell you what, uh, Jared, by sheer coincidence, on the satellite dish for years, the NBC affiliate there in Casper covering the area has been something I've watched over and over again. (laughs) So I watch Gambino and all the guys, and it's been something where I've developed a great affinity for the area. So when you brought up the temperatures and all that stuff... I was well aware of what was going on, so we we keep track of Wyoming pretty good around these parts. Frank is a a contributor on our show as well. We'll have to pass along that you said hello. Yeah, tell them I miss him now because they, after years, they finally took the feed down off the dish. I guess they're using fiber optic feeds to to cover the outlying areas. But tell him that we miss him a great deal here watching sports. Hey, I will do that. Hey, thanks so much for taking some time out of your day. We appreciate it. And who knows, maybe we'll uh, connect at the Mountain West Conference Tournament. I would say if I were to bet on it right now, it may very well be the case. Jared, I really appreciate uh, you taking time to talk to me. Take care.